Hey guys, uh, in this video I want to show you how I usually adjust my CR4 uh, playback and record height um, without special tools. The special tools are very hard to get, very expensive and you can achieve um, a satisfying result with the, yeah, with the tricks I will show you and it's a good baseline. Uh, of course, if you have the the possibility you can send it to someone that has the tools and get a proper service done but if you don't and if you don't want to spend the money or want to do it yourself then this is uh, maybe a little help on adjusting your machine so what we need is a SMOV adjustment tape so that's basically a tape with a 10 kilohertz recording and usually it's uh, recorded on a reference tape machine so the, the heads are perfectly aligned and we will use this one as our guideline and yeah, I'll say we insert the tape then we will need a flat screwdriver and the two adjustment wheels in the middle are for the height. The right one is the playback and the left one is the record height. So first we will adjust the playback. I got a multimeter hooked up here. We will set this multimeter to AC mode after we run the machine so we can start it already. So we set it to um, AC and the range we will set to millivolts. So now we see we get around 40, uh, 45, 50 uh, millivolts. So I will turn the adjustment wheel slowly to get uh, more amplitude. That's one click, nothing. Now we are at 80. Yeah, 82. One more. 87. Let's try two. 80. Around 86. So let's go back one. Seems to be the sweet spot with 98 millivolts. So once that is done, um, we have to check the, the record height. And this is relatively easy. What I always like to do is I check the whole frequency range with a sine wave sweep. So this means the uh, frequency will sweep from around 40 hertz up to let's say 16 kilohertz and I have my multimeter connected in AC mode displaying millivolts and I have a small piece of paper where we write down the, the values so I plan to make a maximum of four tests and let's see so it would be good if along the whole frequency range I get the maximum amount of millivolts so the maximum amplitude and this will be my goal and after each setting I will adjust the record height and see if it's getting better or worse and where it's getting better and where it's getting worse. And this should help me to adjust uh, everything properly without special tools. So I will fire up the generator and hit the record button. And pull. So at 40 Hz I have 140 millivolts for the first test.
and 16 kilohertz now at 45 so that's for the first test now we will go back to the beginning stop this and then try a different adjustment so I will go clockwise to see if it makes a difference a couple of turns Okay, so rinse, repeat, and play starting at 40 hertz, clocking in at 154. Already uh, more than before, before we had 140, now we have 154. So for this test now we just jump to the frequencies to save some time, so the next checkpoint is 500, so let's jump here, 500 is coming in at 189, a lot stronger than before, then let's see, the 2 kilohertz coming in at 185, And the uh, 4 kilohertz. 179. So this is the red direction. So the 6 kilohertz should be right around here. 6 kilohertz is 164. Oh, we gained a lot of strength on the higher frequencies. So the 8 kilohertz is coming right now. It's going in with uh, 137. Looking good. So 12 kilohertz. 12 kilohertz, 73. So we are losing a bit on the high end. 14 kilohertz. It's almost the same, 55 and 16, not worth mentioning, is the same with 45. Okay. So, let's make one more adjustment. Going the same direction, I have a good feeling about this. Okay. So now we repeat the process, we start again at 40 Hz. Just speeding things up a little bit here. So hit play. And let's go. For this starting with 166. So again stronger than before. It's a good sign. Then the 500 hertz. Approaching 8 kilohertz. Yeah, we lost quite a bit there. It's really starting to fall off. So it's not looking good. But I will try to see which direction I have to turn. Okay, let's see. is now 14 with 53 so I missed the 12 and the 8 I will have to check again the 8 is 120 and 
the 12 kilohertz is around 66 and this one will be 45 I guess again okay let's stop this so now after adjusting a little bit uh, we see you can either choose to have a very good low end or a good high end so my final setting will be in between those two tests so I already adjusted it a little bit back so clearly we can see the winner on the 40 Hertz is the third test also this is the third the third the second the second the second the second the second so this is the the point um, where we will have to find the sweet spot for I'm not sure if you can see it so the third test scored the highest at 40 500 2 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz and the other tests scored the second test scored the most from 6 to 16 so I was turning um, clockwise so I will turn back counterclockwise a little bit and have the final and the fourth tests and see how it's going so let's see again so before I was maybe two or three clicks more to the to the left uh, more clockwise I already turned it back two clicks so I guess that should already be enough so let's run the test again put the record button and start at 40 again 40 coming in with 154 the same as the second test and then jump to 500 500 coming in with 191 so yeah it's quite in the middle the 2 kilohertz Then the four kilohertz. One nine one, looking quite good. Then the six kilohertz should be here. Six kilohertz, one six eight. Eight kilohertz, one three, uh, one two eight. Now the higher frequencies. Let's check the twelve. 67 14 is coming in at 57 and 16 barely noticeable maybe even outside of the range of this machine so the results now are sort of low and 40 hertz is quite similar 500 Hertz got a little boost compared to the second one 2 kilohertz mm, Got a good boost compared to the second one And 4 kilohertz Got a lot better And then where usually the the fall off is happening we notice something that now on a 4 kilo uh, on a 6 kilohertz we're having uh, 168 millivolts so the adjustment was um, quite good and also here scored a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more so yeah we could repeat this a couple of times always going one click up or down but yeah I'm quite happy with this for now 
So the only test left now is to see if it's bleeding uh, to the other side of the tape. So for this we will uh, reverse the tape. And we will record a stable sine wave. And record it on the A side. Then flip it and have a listen if we can notice the sine wave on the B side. So, of course, this only works if you have an empty tape. So, first we have to erase the A and B side and then record on the A side, play it back on the B side and have a a good listen and also have a look on the multimeter so if the frequencies are outside of our abilities then the multimeter will still catch them and yeah it's it's quite a good guideline actually okay so turning down the input volume now hitting record recording nothing So we'll try to record for around um, 10 seconds or 15 seconds, should be enough. So, 15 seconds. Fill up the tape. So at the moment there is nothing happening, nothing much. It's a little bit of noise uh, around 3 millivolts it's not not a deal breaker actually okay that's done so now flipping back to the A side and now we have to record our sine wave I think I will go for um, uh, 2.5 uh, kilohertz or something so there are many different um, sine wave generators, so just uh, Google sine wave generator. Uh, the first one coming up, we set it to 2.5 kilohertz, we set play, and then we will record. Drop the volume a little bit and record. We're recording at around 300 millivolts. And we also try to record around 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, so now we record it on the A side and we will flip the tape, listen to the empty B side, and if we notice any sounds, then our adjustment is wrong. If it's silent, then uh, we made a good adjustment. On the A side, reverse the tape to the start. Then record silence. Let's record for, let's say, around 20, 25 seconds. Here we have um, the noise ratios, not the ratio, but the, the voltage that we have is around 2 millivolts. That's not too bad. Okay, stop it right there. Then we flip it around and then erase the side as well. On this side we have a similar voltage, around 2 millivolts. So we have a ma maximum recording range of 15 seconds. And I will try to record a sine wave with the sine wave generator with different frequencies starting from low to high within this given uh, time frame 
and then I will check the B side if I can hear the bleeding through of the tape or not. So now the idea is I have the A side, I record on the A side and if the height adjustment is not correct then it will move to the B side so it will be audible on the B side. That's not what we want. We want to have uh, almost complete silence. Um, so yeah, let's try. Tape is reversed. We set the input volume around here. Then we fire up the sine wave generator. I will start with around 200 hertz. And then as we go, I will move up to, let's say, 10 kilohertz, that's the same frequency as the, the reference tape. So let's start. And now slowly go up. And we hit the 10 hertz, a kilohertz and stop right there. So, now we will use the B side and check if there's any sound that we just recorded on the A side bleeding through to the B side. We will also have this meter to check uh, if there's inaudible audible frequencies or noise then this uh, multimeter will catch it. So, let's play. So I turn the volume on my amp all the way up. This is 1.8 millivolts, so 2, the same like we had before. Here's a little bit audible, but yeah. It showed um, 2 millivolts, which was the same like the, the normal noise the noise floor. So the last thing I will well, I would like to do after after this whole setting um, is to connect a headphone and then you will just uh, record something on this tape maybe some tracks that you know very well that you really know how they sound how they're supposed to sound and while recording you will slowly uh, adjust the, the record height and see if it's getting better or worse just to double check uh, on, on normal full range music because with sine waves it can be quite tricky and after that is done and you found this, the sweet spot um, yeah I would recommend you to try the tape in uh, another tape deck or in a Walkman and see if it's really compatible with all the other tape machines out there. So before I do the adjustment I made a mark here, so I marked the current position. So then when I listen to the track and I do adjustments I can always revert or go back to the old setting. So I will fire up a track now. Um, you might not hear much in the video but you will see me make the adjustments and then let's see if we end up on the same spot or not. So now when I turned it um, clockwise I instantly noticed that the higher frequencies get worse. So 
so I will try the other direction now. So, yeah, it seems like the first adjustment was the right one. So when I turned it more counterclockwise, I noticed that the lower frequencies get worse and that the left-right channel was not um, really working properly. So I ended up with the same adjustment that I made before and it's sounding quite good. So what I will do now, I will record a track on this tape and then check it on a, on a, one of my Walkmans. I have quite a collection of quite good Walkmans to check with. And if the recording sounds good, then I will consider this a success. So yeah, that's all from my side. I hope this helps out some people. Like I said before, it's not the, the best and most professional way to adjust your machine, but um, yeah. It's, it's a good start if you don't have the money, don't have the time or the possibility to send it to someone. Uh, yeah, this, this might help you out and it can be done instantly. It takes around 20 to 30 minutes depending on how much tests uh, you make and how, yeah, how precisely you want to, to get the sweet spot dialed in right. Because uh, like I said here, I only made four tests on this one you can make I don't know 10 10 tests uh, always one click away and uh, maybe get even better results but I'm quite happy now with the result and uh, we'll do the recording yeah and then report back uh, if everything is okay so now uh, I check the tape it sounds very good on all my Walkmans but to be sure, I want to recheck the azimuth adjustment because if you change the head height, um, this also might change. So going back to this tape now. This time I will check it with my multimeter. I have two videos up where I check it with the oscilloscope. So be sure to check those out. They might be um, a little help to you if you also have an oscilloscope. If not, just use the multimeter like me and let's see so um, on the right side we have the playback head azimuth and on the left side the record head so first of all we will adjust the, the playback head with playing the reference tape yes okay now we have to Set the range again. Should be millivolts like before in our test. So it's around 88. Let's give it a couple of clicks. So it's got worse. So let's try the other direction. Three, one more click maybe. Ninety-two, ninety. Yeah, let's try one more or two more. Now it's getting worse. So that was around this setting here. Ninety, ninety-one. Let's try one to left. Nope. Let's try one to the right. Yeah, this one looks quite good. 
So here we have the highest voltage. After this is done, we will use an empty tape again. So the one we had before. And we use the calibration mode to set the record azimuth to be aligned with the playback. So let's see that we get the bias right again. Now we change this one here to get the maximum reading. Did you see this jump here? Now it's going down again. So it seems this setting here is the sweet spot. Yeah, so this will be a record azimuth adjustment. So this is quite easy on the CR4 with the calibration mode. And yeah, if you want to check again, we can make another recording. Um, yeah, to double check. But I guess it will be alright. So after all is said and done. You can repeat all the steps again, like the one with the bleeding and the one where you record uh, something and listen to it and see the frequency response. Uh, if you don't have the, the special tools, it will be a back and forth. But with every setting and every repetition, you're getting closer to the, yeah, the best setting. And if you don't have the special tools, this is the best at least that I can do and I'm by no means a tape expert but it always worked for me my tapes sound very good they are compatible with all my other machines and yeah I hope this helped you out and if you have any questions write a comment and now that we're done we can reassemble our machine again so we just have to Find the lid, which is here, and put it back on, and we are done. See you guys.